most of the cases nowadays they have a, a cage where you can just, you see, with some clips, match the holes. Thanks. Job done. Uh, as you can see here, if you want an extra uh, security, you can put screws in here. So you're gonna block the uh, grid to the case. I don't think it's necessary. I rather have it like this. And sometimes when we have to ship the computer, we like to put the screws, sorry, here. So, you know, a long transport, this thing may come out. This way it's gonna be super secure. We don't need to do it in this case. And then we have the SSD drive. Obviously you see this cage is bigger than this hard drive. So in this case, screws are absolutely necessary. We use the big screws for the motherboard. These are tiny holes. So we're gonna go to bag number two. We can get rid of these screws because probably we won't need them anymore. New set of screw, little screwdriver, hop. And... It's worth noting that some of them have toolless uh, SSD yes, true. cages as well, but in this case, no. So yes, the SSD really doesn't vibrate. It has nothing mechanical inside, so two screws only will do, but we want to make it properly. So we have no optical drive in this case. It can be easily fitted by removing this front grid here. And you get just going to slot it in. And uh, this is, for example, is toolless. This clip is going to clip when the uh, optical drive is in and is secure. You can still add screws if you want. I prefer screws, feel more secure, but it's up to you. Okay, now let's go back here. Now is the time of the power supply. I will keep the graphics card for last because here is where the power for the CPU goes. The power supply is gonna be here. I don't wanna have a cable to run over the fan or to run to, from the back to here, which can be, uh, we use some extensions sometimes, so we had an advantage, but if you don't have any, wait for the graphics card as last. You can grab your power supply. Oh, and don't forget to remove the plastic. Whenever you put it in, yes, there gonna, is plastic on top of the graphics card. I'm gonna tell you, explain this later, don't worry. <laughs> Our power supply, not modular, modular in this case, we have a fan here, and as you can see, we have a hole here, in this case also with a removable grid to keep it clean. So, this fan, we can make it face down. Here are the on-off switch and the power plug hole, so, Definitely this way. Ah. What I like to do in this case is to bend this a little bit. Just bend it a bit so I have more room for the power supply. Let's load it in like this. So you see, all the holes are matching. And we got this type of screw. These are usually always for the power supply. You can use it for the motherboard if you have enough. They have this hexagonal head. Okay, so the power supply. We slot in most of the screws. As you can see, I just put them in place and now I'm gonna proceed and screw them in. I will keep an end at the back of the power supply so it stays well. And voila, you can obviously use your normal type screwdriver. Okay, now let's see. Let's be smart. So we know we have one, two hard drive. We have no optical drive. So we will need two SATA power. So we will definitely need this cable. And then we have 24 pin for the motherboard, which is gonna go here and power up all the motherboard. So we definitely need this one. That's normally always there. Yeah, always there. Then we have this beautiful cable here, as you can see, eight pins. And guess what? It says CPU. So this is what is gonna give power to the CPU. And then we will need this beautiful cable here, which is PCIe, as it says on the label, which is gonna go in the graphics card. So this is actually what we need from the power supply. So these cables here becomes, in this case, useless. Obviously you have some 4P Molex, some other SATA cables, SATA power uh, connectors. We don't really need them. What I tend to do is I group them nicely like this. Maybe I usually put a cable tie here. And then another one here. So they stay like this. You, as you can see the 
it's easy to follow the, uh, basically, the cable are bent from the packaging, so it's easy to follow, it's much easier to follow their own uh, bends when you, when you wire it, so you don't need to change everything. So, I will leave this cable here for now, I'm just gonna bring at the back the cables I need. Actually, I made a little mistake. This cable here is for the CPU, as we said, and we have no space to make it go in from the back, so we, it needs to stay in the front, and this is also why we installed the graphics card. We haven't installed the graphics card yet. So this cable here, I will bring it here. And as you can see, there is a space here. Also, CPU power is, tends to be always at the top of the motherboard. Sometimes it's here, but most of the time you're gonna find it here. I'm gonna clip it in so it doesn't move. And now you see we have this cable here. What I'm gonna do is remove this back plate. Why should you remove the plastic protection? Mm, if the card may go out and this may melt. It never actually happened to me but I think I always remove the plastic, so <laughs> go for it. There are also bits here, we don't need to remove them now. As you can see, this is the part that is gonna plug inside the motherboard, and this is what is gonna secure the card. And we have a little space here. This is where we're gonna uh, secure the CPU cable. So, as you can see, I'm gonna put it here and slot the card in. So, I like to, when I'm building standing, I like to keep the computer this side, so uh, horizontal instead of vertical because it's much easier to fit in stuff helped by the gravity yeah and uh, unless you have a chair and a solid surface where you can work with the computer in front but in this case we don't so we're just gonna keep it like this i'm gonna push down this cable a bit you can hide it between this uh, cooler for example this dissipator here so try to make it the way you like it you can secure it here to the audio cable for example with a cable tie let's do that why not don't pull it too much, just to keep it in place. Cut the cable tie. Now, don't forget to secure the card with the screws that you just removed. So this is kind of good. If you wanna keep on going, then you can do all the thingies, like maybe put another cable tie here so it all comes neat, but we can do it later, no problem. Let's stick to the uh, building. So you see the graphics card is not going anywhere now. Voila. Now we go for like this for a second because I wanna bring this cable in the front. So possibly I'm gonna make it pass in this hole here, like that. And as you can see, it comes here out at the front and we can just slot it in here. And again, these cables, the plugs, they only go in one side. So if you feel yourself you are pushing too much, it's probably the wrong way around. This cable that we saved before, so we can connect one hard drive and another hard drive. If the cable are a bit stiff, just move the power supply at the bottom, or at, sorry, the hard drive at the bottom or at the top, whatever place you feel is better. And I usually tend to do something. And it doesn't matter what order that plug. Yes. Just I tend to do something like this to keep the cables out of the way. I put a nice cable tie here. I don't like to tie too much these cable ties because, uh, you know, power supply may be faulty. You may need to add another hard drive in the future, so you don't want to have everything super, super stiff and cable tied in, otherwise you, you will end up cutting lots of cable ties and it's gonna be a pain. So just one, should do the job. This cable can stay here and it won't go. Give it some slack. Anywhere. Some slack. slack. What's the slack? Slack <laughs> means you get a bit of, you know, when you get cushion? No, yeah. And you get a bit of line, you give it some slack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Graphics card. So in this case, we're gonna need only one. Some graphics card will require two connections with three pins or four pins. So in this case, we're gonna use only one. It's the long bit. So I will make it pass in the second hole here, right to the front, turn the case. Always move it slow, you don't wanna scratch it. So we got a cable here. It only goes in one side. Voila. We can cable tie this. So it looks a bit more neat. And then what I tend to do is to secure this cable to this 24-pin Molex. I do this personally because when we ship the computers, uh, I want something to hold the graphics card in place. So this is a good way not to have the graphics card falling down along transport. And what I do, I just grab a big cable tie and I do like this. So this one won't really go anywhere. 
All the bits and bobs, you can fix it later. Maybe you can put a cable tie here, bend this a bit more. All the uh, little details can be sorted out later. Then we got pretty much everything in place, CPU, graphics card and motherboard. Now we have this set of cable that in this case, uh, so you can either leave it here, for example, like this. So whenever you need them, you can cable tie them. They're gonna sit at the bottom of the case, no problem at all. But in this case, we have some space here because we are not using all the uh, hard drive cages. So we'll put it this way, either inside here, or sometimes you can do something like this. Just make sure to keep it very flat. So when we're gonna slide in the panel, we won't have problem closing it. There are also some uh, hooks on the case like this one, which you can use to make it even more uh, clean and neat. I don't want to do this in this case because I need a bit of, um, they need to move a bit. So when I close the panel, nothing is going to unplug or nothing is going to be too pulled. And so the computer is going to work 100%. Okay, so these two SATA cable, uh, we need to connect them to SATA port one. Try to use the first SATA port for the SSD, for the primary hard drive where you're going to have the operating system and the second port for the other, for the secondary hard drive, your storage hard drive. Don't bend too much the SATA cable, they can be uh, weak sometimes and you may experience problem with them. So I usually never cable tie them too tight or sometimes I never, I don't cable tie them at all. Last bit, the mythical USB 3 header. As you can see, the pins are really, 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 really tiny. And there is this little uh, guide here and it's the only way you can fit in this cable. So try to put it, very straight like this and try to insert it very very slowly directly down directly down yeah as you can see yes and it clips in again i what i like to do is maybe grab this cable and secure it in a way so this stays always vertical you see maybe something like this for example you don't want that coming out all, yes all of your usb ports because this is very heavy, can bend very, very easily. And uh, if it happens to bend the pins, I usually suggest you to grab one of these and very, very carefully start in bending it back. It not doesn't- Not while it's on there. Huh? Not while it's on there. No, of course not. <laughs> and uh, be very, very gentle because otherwise they're gonna break. And even if they're not perfectly straight, when they are kind in position, trying to uh, insert the plug again to make them go straight again. And that's about it. So we have done this. The computer is finished, I would say. So let me double check everything. Just make sure that everything is plugged in properly. Okay. So you see, it's not perfect. It's not super, super neat. You will need a bit of extension and a bit more work if you want to do a super neat wiring, but I think this is more than acceptable. So let's try and see if the back side panel closes. So. Let's flat out everything here as much as we can. And easy. Boom. Is in. Just close it. This always have most of the cases have thumb screws nowadays, so it's really easy to put that back in. When he says these days, what he means is back in the days. Back in the days you usually had all only normal screws, yeah. Drivers. Exactly. Back in the days, there were no cable tying holes, no rounded edges, so you bust your finger every time you yeah. put a cable through. And as you can see now, we got this, we can remove these plastics. Close the computer. And as you can see, it looks pretty good to me. And voila. So even in the, from the outside, because the window is just here, you see just few cables here and there, but it's actually a pretty decent build in my opinion. As you can see at the back, everything is accessible with our backplate, all neat, so the screws are in place. This one didn't bend because we had plenty of space here. And job done. The computer is built. That is um, Nick's ultimate top tips of awesomeness of building your very own PC at home. You made it look very easy. Oh, thank you. If you follow the steps, Nothing can go wrong, I'm confident. Just make sure you don't scratch the case or you don't break stuff. Don't move the case around too much. And before rushing on opening the components and building, take some time and check 
picture how the computer is going to be at the end. It's going to be much easier to build a computer for you, especially if you start having liquid cooling, Wi-Fi cards, modular. If this is your first computer, then and you've gone straight for liquid cooling, I, I amb ambitious. Yeah, ambitious. They're not difficult to build, but it requires a bit of planning. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we're sorry about how the camera was going on. In the, it, it we had to switch like three different cameras, so uh, it, it, some of it may, may not make sense. But um, if you enjoy the video and you want to watch me build a PC for the very first time, then click on Nick's face, and you'll be able to uh, see him, uh, me build a PC in in two parts. I know this one's also in two parts, otherwise it would have been insanely long. And I'm going to be holding the camera and tell off to you when you make a mistake. He does come in and he's just like, you're wrong, 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 what are you doing? But the PC is working perfectly fine. It's our, it's our streaming system, so yeah, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, someone may want a computer to just boot up and they don't care about the wiring. Someone wants a really neat computer inside and everything. It's up to you. This is what's a general guide. With these steps, you can build every computer you want, basically. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Unless you want to build a deep learning PC. Or a Raptor or a T-Rex. The T-Rex is... I really want, when, when we build the new T-Rex, we should definitely build vlog it with yeah. Luke. The thing is, it takes a bit, so. It's it does take a bit of time, it takes a few weeks. Time lapse it. Time something. lapse it, yeah. yeah. Guys, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. This is gonna take ages to edit because of the <laughs> eight billion cameras that we used. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. I do not have many, Nicola. I hate you guys. Uh, you can't <laughs> say you hate them all. I only hate one of them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, keep your workspace I clear. Like yeah, he just doesn't like me. <laughs> Nobody likes me here. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> it's okay, I have access to power tools, so it's absolutely fine. Let me bring this back to the technician, so. Yeah, not that, that's one, this one's mine. It's yours, indeed. Well guys, what is this used for? Let us know in the comment section below. What do you think this is used for? It's nothing to do with building a PC. It's a safe personal sex toy. This is my personal, <laughs> this is my personal so toy. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>